when I say conventional weapons, what comes to your mind are just the usual rifle, grenades, uh, bombs, and the rest of them. Uh, for example, if you've offended somebody, they can target you with normal conventional weapon, and that's just it. Weapons of mass destruction does not discriminate. It kills both the target and the non-target. It kills the innocent and also the non-innocent. As a, weapons of mass destruction, they call it unconventional weapon. So if you call them unconventional, that means they are a conventional weapon. Conventional weapons are the ones you are used to. Those are the stuff that terrorists and bandits and armed robbers they use in Nigeria. It's something you are very, very familiar with in American film. Or even in Hollywood films and in Bollywood films. But unconventional ones are not something you can just come across on the street. And why they call them mass destruction is because of the incalculable number of people or things that you can kill at a single blast. Basically, there are four types. You have the nuclear, you have the chemical, you have the biological, and finally, you have the radiological. So they are basically of four types. You have the nuclear, you have the biological, you have the chemical, and you have the radiological. Usually, you come across three types in most of the books you read. But the fourth one is also important. Collectively, they call them weapons of mass destruction. Again, I will emphasize, because they are highly unconventional. Conventional one, like I said, just think, when you want to answer that question, they are something you come across daily. Rifle, guns, submachine gun, bombs, grenade, dynamite. Those are conventional bombs. Unconventional is something you don't just see. That is why till today now, till today, there are only nine countries, if I remember correctly, that have the capability to produce weapons of mass destruction. Just nine. The other states can try with the remaining three, but then when you talk about the biggest of them all, which is nuclear weapon, it's only nine states in the world. And I'll emphasize this. It has nothing to do with whether you are poor or you are rich at all. Even some of the poorest states in the world have actually have weapons of mass destruction. And some of the rich ones don't even have that weapon of mass destruction. You know, that weapon is what you call the great equalizer. For example, that is why North Korea is still in existence till today. That's why the fact that Nigeria is richer than North Korea. If given the opportunity, America would have wiped off North Korea. But they could not near North Korea because of that thing called weapons of mass uh, destruction. That, that was I said. Even if you are poor, be powerful. Your poverty should not be an excuse for you not to be powerful. You'll be powerful. And when you are rich again, you still have to be powerful at the same time. That you are rich and you are not powerful, that means you are in trouble. So, weapon of mass destruction is the great equalizer. That's what brings you to the with the big boys. And that's why right today and forever, we keep referring, I keep making you the example of that country called the North Korea. Then when you talk of North Korea, whether we like it or not, we talk of Pakistan. Then when you talk of Pakistan, then you talk of India. Then when you talk of India again, then you go back to Israel. All these are nuclear-powered uh, states. They are not just states that you can just talk to anyhow. The economy of Saudi Arabia is 100 times better than that of Israel. But Saudi Arabia is not as powerful as Israel. If Saudi Arabia is not a nuclear state. So the economy of Saudi Arabia is 100 times better. After they don't have crude oil in, in Israel. But then, Saudi Arabia moves the world economy. So that was why I said the weapon of mass destruction, they are what you call the great equalizer. Exactly. You can make the rich, I mean the poor to be equal to the rich to the rich immediately. So indirectly, I'm telling Nigeria what to do for it to be great. Get the weapon of mass destruction and it will respect you anywhere you go. Uh, sorry, quick question. Out of the four, which one would you recommend for Nigeria? Nuclear, chemical, biological, radiological? <laughs> now, now let, let's continue. The powerful of the four, the most powerful of the four is the nuclear weapon. 
the most powerful of the four is the nuclear weapon. Now that's top. A nuclear blast can kill in millions, not in thousands. <laughs> the one they drop on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6 and 9, 1945, was in kilotons. The one that, that's what they call the blast strength, kilotons. Hmm. By 1950, by 1950, they've, they've, they've developed bomb that, that contains megaton blast. You know, kilotons and megatons, they are two different things entirely. Uh, the Americans call it tamunu. The blast is just one effect of a nuclear weapon. That blast is just one effect. Another thing is the intense heat. The heat can suck out the the liquid in your, in your body. Then for you to be where you have the blast radius, if you survive it, your eardrums will burst and your eyes will pop out. <laughs> it's a serious thing. It's not something you... You know, it's the stuff that dries you are, you are this way, then it dries off your blood immediately down to your bone. And that's why they call that stuff weapons of mass uh, destruction. And those are just the short-term effects. That is the initial one. Now, there's a long-term one that gives you different kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Cancer, leukemia, hemophilia, and all those other things. I mean, they are long-term. 100 years from now, you are still feeling the effect of that thing. Uh, that's why they call the weapons of mass destruction. They are not something you use, and you're not tell the person you use it on, sorry, it was a mistake. That explains why Russia and America have not been able to use it against themselves. Because they know the implication. And that explains why America has not been able to not at attack North Korea, because they knew the implication. Now, I said the second one is what you call chemical weapon. That stuff kills in thousands. Chemical weapons. You have a sarin, you have taboon, you have mustard. Sorry, Yoruba warfare. There's thing, that thing they throw at you, that you start scratching your body. That is chemical weapon. Yes, but just put enough Wiriqui on a bomb and send it to that country. That is chemical. <laughs> Where they place, but that is chemical weapon. You know, you have our own traditional. I don't know if you've ever encountered where they You only hear about uh, Iraq and Iran during their war, 1980 to 1980. They used it against themselves. Let me give you a good example of what is meant by chemical weapon. You know, that thing you do to a mosquito when you fleet it, and you are using chemical weapon against that mosquito. You know what that thing does to the mosquito? It's warm. Can you remember it's warm? When you drop salt on it, can you see the way that thing acts? You know, the cells of the X1, they're outside its body. The, the cells of that thing, the inner skin of it. There. So, you know, the way that thing reacts, there's no nowhere to touch. That is why. So, when you use a chemical weapon on the human, it's the same way. There was a particular chemical that just goes into your system and shut down your muscle. As in your tongue, your lungs inside will collapse together. In humanity, we are so deadly. Somebody just sat there and said, how can I kill more people? I mean, what is going on? I mean, I mean somebody... I mean, I mean, so just sat down and said, no, to kill people violently. And just came up with that thing. Even there is the one that will touch your skin and your skin will start peeling. That was why they call them weapons of mass destruction. Remember, that stuff does not discriminate. Whether you are a fighter or you are not, as long as you can breathe in and breathe out, you are dead. It's the same for nuclear weapon. Remember... A nuclear weapon is deadly because it will kill you, kill your car, that has anything to do with the war, kill your house that was standing on its own, kill your dog that is busy barking, kill your chicken. <laughs> that, that is right. Kill your grandfather in the village and your grand even go to their grave and destroy the graves. <laughs> that place will become inhabitable in the next hundred years. Then, thirdly, you have the Biological weapon. You had a taste of that stuff during the COVID-19 lock lockdown. Yeah, when you turn bacterials to weapon. Till today, they are not sure about the origin of that COVID-19 thing. Some are saying that stuff came from China. China is saying it came from a, a leakage in American lab. So we don't know. But that is a good example of bacteriological weapon. COVID-19 was a virus. They said it was a virus that was cultivated. It was going through the testing, testing stage and now escaped into the wild and we now be, we got into trouble. Some are able to say HIV is about a biological weapon. 
that they are testing, testing and refining and to make it better. I have a good example of a biological weapon that they are developing, that they are keeping, smallpox. Smallpox, now you must have gone through that thing when we were younger. And, and it never stops, never leaves your body. So you know what the whites were doing? What the scientists were doing? They were, they, they were busy building a more potent form of that smallpox in case Tijabamawa. The Americans they are doing in uh, Russia, they are doing, the Chinese, everybody, they are all they are cultivating all these sicknesses and diseases and putting them in bottles and waiting for the day that that war will break out. Finally, you have the radiological. Radiological are, are weapons of mass destruction. Listen, they are weapons of mass destruction in uh, powder form. Powder. Yes, they are like Maggie. Powder form. Very, very small form. They don't need any sophisticated bomb rocket to carry them. It's something you can just put in your purse. My point is, my point is, you could be killed without even knowing that you are dead. <laughs> Sorry, it's real wahala. The point is, see, radiological weapons are slow-acting agents. Yeah, slow-acting agent that, you see, you, you know, you just start growing lean. They won't know what is happening. And they will give all the treatment in the world, in the world and it won't work until you are dead. Barriers to arms control. Why has arms control not worked? Why has arms control... Why has it not worked 100%? Why? What are those things that has been making arms control to be extremely difficult? That has been making arms control to be ineffective? You have two major barriers. You have international barrier and domestic barrier. You have international barrier and domestic barrier. Under the domestic, you have prestige. National prestige. Under the domestic, you have national prestige. One, two, you have a military and economic consideration. Military and economic consideration. Under the international, one, fear of future conflict. Nobody knows tomorrow. Fear of future conflict. Two, distrust, distrust about the intention of other states, distrust about the intention of other states. There's a third one I can't remember, but then those are basically the factors responsible that act as barrier to arms control. So let's take the first one, fear of future conflict. Fear of future conflict. What if there's a war next week and we agree this week that we should all destroy our weapon? Again, I'll repeat, I said fear is a major factor responsible for the ineffectiveness of arms control. It will say from the beginning about general relation that there are no permanent friends or enemies. What we have is what you call interest. So we can be friends today and we are not sure what will happen tomorrow. Then why would I not want to trust my destiny, put my destiny in your hands? If you are happy with, with, with me today, what is the guarantee that you are not going to be unhappy with me next week? If I say because of the fact that we are happy now together, and I tell you all my secret, I tell you all my weapon, they will not become enemy next week. That means I'm in trouble. That stuff happened. I'll give you a good example. Ukraine, Ukraine. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Ukraine has nuclear weapon or had nuclear weapon in 1991. But because of the euphoria that we've entered into, into a new era, she gave a nuclear weapon back to Russia. I love the way you said her. She, she gave that thing back to Russia, and they are paying the price for it still today. 
And that is one reason why arms control don't work. That's, now, under the domestic, uh, prestige, yes, yes, prestige. Prestige. They have it. We must have it. It's something they have it now. Then we must have it. I, I, I don't know. I think Nigerians are still better. If you know how humans, human beings, they must mortgage their body to get iPhone. Now, now, <laughs> say, say, prestige pushes states to have that thing. China was the first in the fifties, listen, to have a nuclear to to, prove, to have a nuclear weapon. China was the, was the first to have a nuclear weapon, despite the fact that India was poor. India, you know, they don't say no. Ah, we we'll enter into a new dangerous phase. How can China have a nuclear weapon? Not that India has anybody to kill. I should, but they could not rest. They could not sleep. They were having nightmare in India that China now has a nuclear weapon. And they never rested until they built their own nuclear weapon and they announced that we've arrived. Then Pakistan started having nightmare. How can India have nuclear weapon? <laughs> I'm not making it up. That was exactly what happened. How can India, ordinary India, we are both poor people, how can they have nuclear weapon? <laughs> what kind of rubbish? So people will now look at India, they will be rating India above me. No, whatever it takes, we must. And Pakistan, they have nuclear Till today, the two of them, they have no enemy to kill, but they have it. <laughs> they'll be fighting you know, in case you're not aware but they, 